And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how advanced Taiwan is from both a social and technological point of view. For those of you who are wondering where I am, I'm currently at this really cool place in Taipei City called Songshan Creative Park. Songshan Creative Park is said to be the creative hub of Taipei. Now, a couple of videos ago, I actually shot at a really cool location in Taipei called Huashan Creative Park. And in some ways, these two places are similar in that they both serve a similar purpose. And the purpose of these creative parks or these creative hubs is basically to give the people here in Taipei or anyone who wants to come here a place to come and walk around. Hopefully, it will allow them to kindle their creativity. And this place is really, really nice. There are a few smaller parks within this creative park, uh, which is really nice. One of the parks has a, a medium-sized pond, which is quite nice. There are frogs and you can see ducks and all sorts of little birds flying around. And it's really, really peaceful. And it kind of takes you away from the hustle and the bustle of the city. If you're in the area, I would highly recommend that you come here, walk around Songshan Creative Park a bit, explore it a little bit and just enjoy yourself uh, because like I said it's quite a relaxing place, the environment's quite relaxing and it's a really interesting place to walk around. As usual, I'll put a link in the description of this video with all the details about Songshan Creative Park. How would you rate how high-tech or how technologically advanced a country is in the first place? Usually things like access to internet, tech venture capitalists, the level of smartphone usage, the number of patents filed, industrial design, etc, etc, they all play a very important role in uh, gauging how technologically advanced or how high-tech a particular country is. According to some studies, Taipei was ranked as the fifth most high-tech city in the world. I think that this is quite astounding because that would mean that technically speaking, Taipei is more advanced than places like Singapore or South Korea. Another reason why many people consider Taiwan to be so high-tech is of course mainly due to Taiwan's semiconductor industry. Taiwan's semiconductor industry and the manufacturing industry in Taiwan is still very, very competitive on a global scale. And although China has made some significant advances in the semiconductor industry, they still haven't been able to catch up to Taiwan. And I think one of the reasons why Taiwan has managed to stay ahead is, first of all, they got an early start in the game. So they managed to get a foothold into the industry before China was able to. And the second reason is, of course, that when you have a neighbor like China, which is growing at an exponential rate and is doing very, very well from a financial point of view, and they're investing so much money into the semiconductor sector to uh, try and overtake Taiwan and become one of the main manufacturers uh, worldwide, like when you have a competitive neighbor like that, it really keeps you on your toes and it pushes you to try and stay ahead of them. So it's a very, very competitive industry. Another reason why Taiwan might be considered quite a high-tech country is because Taiwan doesn't actually have a lot of natural resources like gold and oil and things like that. Like there are natural resources here like jade and that sort of thing. Compared to a lot of other countries, they don't actually have a lot of natural resources. So they have to figure out a way to make money and earn some kind of income and kind of grow their economy. And that is why they have such strong manufacturing industries and technology sectors which focus on technology. Due to the quality, the price and the early start of Taiwan semiconductors, they have been able to serve clients such as Apple, Nvidia and Qualcomm Intel. Taiwan is of course also home to some very big and internationally recognized companies like TSMC, Giant, Zeus, Acer, 
uh, HTC, etc, etc, etc. For example, when I was a kid growing up in South Africa, all the way back in the 80s, I remember that giant bicycles were like really, really good bicycles and everyone considered giant bicycles to be very good quality bicycles. Taiwan also has insanely fast and widespread internet. According to some studies, the average user in Taiwan goes through over 10 gigabytes of data per month. This puts Taiwan at second place in the world for the greatest use of mobile data. One of the reasons why so many people in Taiwan tend to use the internet and have access to the internet is that it is very, very affordable in relation to what the average person earns here. For example, there are some really amazing data plans, both mobile and for your home, and per month you're hardly paying anything and you can get unlimited access to the internet which basically means you don't have anything restraining you or holding you back and you can use the internet as much as you like and as often as you like and whenever you like which i think is absolutely fantastic and it's definitely one of the things which i enjoy about living in taiwan another contributing factor as to why the internet usage is so high in taiwan is that a lot of people now don't necessarily send text-based messages. What I mean by that is that a lot of people will now send images and videos as opposed to text in their messages. And of course, this chews up more data, which means that you will be using more data. Next, let's take a look at how socially advanced Taiwanese society is. On paper, Taiwan has a wide range of very progressive laws. And for the most part, I think it's fair to assume that most of those laws are in fact enforced. However, there certainly are some laws which are not always heavily enforced either. One thing I have realized though is that when you see someone breaking the law, let's say someone drives through a red traffic light and you don't see a police officer stop them, that doesn't necessarily mean that they haven't been penalized. There's a very good and strong possibility that that person has in fact been caught on camera. If you can take a picture of someone who's breaking the law, like throwing a cigarette butt out of their car window, parking on a red line, driving through a traffic light or something to that effect and you show it to the police officers or the traffic department, you can actually get a small reward. Now I've never done that personally but I've known people who've done it and I think it does kind of help to keep people in line a little bit because they know that anybody could just take a picture of them uh, busy breaking the law and they could inevitably get into trouble because of that. Let's talk about the effectiveness of the law enforcement in Taiwan. Now, when it comes to things like murder and violent crime, the Taiwanese police officers actually have a very high success rate in capturing uh, criminals and other people who, who happen to break the law. There are a couple of reasons for this high success rate. Uh, and one of those reasons is, of course, that there are a ton of CCTV cameras all over Taiwan. So it's very hard to do something illegal and not be on camera at some point. I remember many, many years ago, there was a guy who poisoned, he was working in the Red Bull factories and he was like pouring some kind of poison into the Red Bulls. And they caught the guy because what happened is they had him on camera at the pharmacy buying some sort of like medicine or something that he was putting into the drinks. Uh, so it's very, very difficult to get away with anything here. And also more recently, there was a group of foreigners who stole a lot of money <clears throat> from I think other ATMs or those armored cars that transport money and I think they ended up catching nearly all of them maybe one or two got away I can't recall but they definitely got a couple of those guys and another reason for this is that Taiwan's quite small it is an island so if you commit a crime where are you gonna go you can't really go anywhere right uh, you kind of stuck in Taiwan it will be kind of difficult for you to get out of Taiwan not impossible but difficult I suspect another contributing factor towards how advanced Taiwan is from a social uh, point of view is that Taiwan is an incredibly safe country now yes there are things like uh, traffic fatalities uh, natural disasters like earthquakes and typhoons and that sort of thing but I'm talking about uh, like how socially advanced people are and how safe society in general is and to be honest with you uh, I've mentioned this many times before I'll just quickly mention it again Taiwan is incredibly safe especially in regards to violent crime Taiwan is also a relatively affluent country most people here have a fairly high standard of living now it is all comparative I mean it depends which country you're comparing it to right but in general the average person here has the basic necessities they have shelter they have food they have hot water most of them probably have 
uh, access to the internet. I mean, heck, I've seen construction workers with better smartphones than I have. So basically what I'm trying to say is that the standard of living in Taiwan is pretty high. And of course, the unemployment rate is incredibly low, which is another contributing factor towards the safety in Taiwan. Because when you have a very high unemployment rate, people tend to just take and the crime rate tends to go up. Furthermore, according to Internation's Expat Insider Survey, Taiwan was ranked as first in the world for quality of life. Some of the reasons for this include Taiwan's National Health Insurance Program, its great infrastructure, amazing and far-reaching public transportation network, its low crime rate, as well as its low unemployment rate. Taiwan is also a very developed country, and in fact, in certain areas, I would argue that uh, Taiwan is actually overdeveloped, which isn't too fantastic because that obviously creates things like air pollution. And another thing which I've noticed is like when they plan the manufacturing areas and the residential areas, they're actually within a very close proximity to one another, which of course is not great for the people who are living close to those particular areas because they have to deal with a lot of noise pollution and a lot of air pollution. But it all depends on the area. There are of course a lot of nice areas which are nowhere near the manufacturing areas. My conclusion is that yes, I think that Taiwan is definitely an advanced country. However, I do feel that there is some room for improvement. That's the end of this video. If you guys would like to know more about Taiwan, please subscribe to this YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I'll put the links to both of those pages in the video description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.